My first exposure to Shakespeare was in uh, seventh or eighth grade. Uh, we read Romeo and Juliet, and I hated it. I didn't get it. I didn't get any of the dirty jokes that everybody else was laughing at. I didn't understand what the big deal with Shakespeare was. It, it, in, in a way, it had a great, great formative effect on me because I knew what it felt like not to get Shakespeare. When I write books now, it's a way of uh, reaching out to people who, like me, were turned off from Shakespeare early on. I was in a, uh, an elementary school. I do quite a bit of outreach, and I was teaching fourth graders how to read a Shakespeare sonnet. And at the end I said, are, are there any questions? And, and a kid on my left raised his hand and said, my brother told me that Shakespeare didn't write Romeo and Juliet. Is that true? Now, it's the, it's the kind of question I'm used to getting from college students or general audiences, but I didn't realize this had trickled down to the fourth grade level. And I had no way of responding other than just saying Shakespeare did in fact write it to, to a fourth grader. And I thought about it and I, and I realized it, it's really time to do what most professors of Shakespeare don't do, which is set aside a couple of years, in this case it was four or five, and devote myself to the question of why smart people think dumb things. There are not a lot of breakthroughs in research, and in writing this book there were one or two that were really, really exciting. The first was going to the Durning Lawrence Library at the Senate House Library in London. And I held off on doing this until the, the very last few weeks of research for the book. Because the whole argument of my book is that no one before 1840, 1850 could have thought that Shakespeare hadn't written the plays long attributed to him. Yet there, were, there was a manuscript and two lectures dating back to 1805 and really 1785 suggesting that someone as early as that had come up with this theory. And I went into the library, called up the manuscript, and uh, it was carefully brought over to me by the librarian. And I started reading it. And in about 20 seconds, I realized I was looking at a forgery. And I started laughing aloud. And of course, all the other scholars in the rare book room gave me dirty looks. But I, it was really an extraordinary moment. Uh, happens once or twice in a career where you discover that something is not the case and I realized how exactly the forger had tripped up and that's the kind of thing that carries you for another five or six years of work. A lot of controversies that go on in our society over abortion, over creationism, I could think of a half dozen others, there are Holocaust deniers and, and, and the like and these are arguments that are very hard to refute even for the most expert people in the field and one of the great things about this book and I hope readers enjoy is I take readers through how and why people have thought what they do which is a little different than setting out exactly what people think. The other thing I'd really like people to take away is an appreciation of what Shakespeare world, Shakespeare's world was like and how he and his fellow playwrights went about creating extraordinary plays. And if you understand that, the question of who wrote them uh, is very easily solved.